Question two. Given the function of g, we are to evaluate the limit of g when t tends to two, and the limit of g when t tends to infinity. These are the techniques to find limits. We shall use algebraic manipulation and theorem 1.4.9 in this question. Let's look at the first problem. A direct substitution of both numerator and denominator yields 0 and 0, which is an indeterminate form. So we need to simplify the fraction to get the answer. Factorizing, we get t minus 2, t plus 4 in the numerator, and t minus 2 times t in the denominator. Cancelling the common terms, we get t plus 4 over t. Now substituting t equals to 2, we get 3. Next, we find the limit of g when t tends to infinity. By theorem 1.4.9, we compare the coefficients of the term with the highest power. The numerator is t squared and the denominator is t squared. They have the same power. Therefore, we take the ratio of 1 over 1, the coefficients. This gives the answer as 1. Question 4 is the differentiation problem. We shall use linear property as a differentiation technique. This means that we can differentiate three terms separately. Moreover, we can extract 3, the constant, out of the differentiation operation. Now we check the math table for these formulas. This gives 4x cubed minus 3, the derivative of secant x, which is secant x tangent x, plus 0, the derivative of the constant. Question 6 uses the product rule to find the derivative of y cubed tangent y. This is the formula for the product rule. If we differentiate the functions u times v, then we'll differentiate v first times u, plus, then differentiate u times v. For this problem, this becomes, we only differentiate the functions to the right of the differentiation operator d dy. Evaluating these derivatives highlighted in yellow, we get the derivative of tangent y as secant squared y. The derivative of y cubed as 3y squared. Simplifying, we get... Notice that we always start with a constant followed by the variable x or y and the rest. In question 8, we are asked to use chain rule to find this derivative. This is the derivative formula for sine u. It is cosine u du dx. So in this question, t squared plus 1 is u. Thus, chain rule gives cosine u du dt, or in other words, cosine t squared plus 1, d dt of t squared plus 1. We differentiate t squared plus 1 at the back and leave t squared plus 1 intact in front. Simplifying, we get
the derivative is 2t plus 0. Rewriting the constant and the variables in front, we get 2t cosine t squared plus 1, which is the answer. Question 10. Given the function ft, we are to evaluate f prime of pi. This means we want the value of f prime when t equals to pi. First, we differentiate f to get f prime. Using linear property, we get This simplifies to 2 times 1, which is the derivative of t, plus 2 times cosine t, derivative of sine t. Therefore, a prime of pi is equal to 2 plus 2 cosine pi in radians. This gives 2 plus 2 times negative 1, which is 2 minus 2, or 0. Notice that f prime t should be written separately from f prime pi because one is a function and the other is a value. Question 12. Given the equation, we are asked to find dy dx at the point 2 comma 0. To find dy dx, we use implicit differentiation. To start, we take d dx on both sides of the equation. By linear property, we differentiate these terms separately. We may also choose to extract a constant. Now let's look at these derivatives. The last two are easy. They are zeros. x cubed differentiated is 3x squared. However, y cubed differentiated with respect to x is 3y squared times dy dx by implicit differentiation. And x squared y needs product rule. So we need to evaluate d dx of x squared and d dx of y. d dx of x squared is 2x and d dx of y is simply dy dx. Organizing the whole thing again, we get 4 times 3 is 12. Expanding, we have 5 times 2, which is 10. x times y. Now notice over here, we are expanding the brackets. So negative 5 times x squared dy dx is minus 5 x squared dy dx. Collecting dy dx terms on one side, we get, and on the other side, we have, thus dy dx is equal to this quotient. To find the value of dy dx at the point 2 comma 0, we simply substitute x equals to 2 and y equals to 0 in this expression. This is 3 over 5. 3 over 5 is actually the gradient of the tangent line at the point 2 comma 0. The last question, number 14, is an optimization problem. We're given that the slant height of the cone is 50 centimeters. We asked to find the height of the cone that maximizes the volume. Supposing V is the volume of the cone. Then by formula we know that if I let the base radius be r, then the volume is equal to 1 over 3 pi r squared h. Now there are two variables r and h, so we need to reduce it to one variable, either all in r or all in h. 
To do this, we need a relation between R and H. From this diagram, can you see a right angle triangle? Therefore, we know that R squared plus H squared equals the hypotenuse, which is 50 squared. It seems easier to write everything in H. So R squared equals 50 squared minus H squared. Rewriting the formula, we get B equals 1 over 3 pi 50 squared minus H squared times H. This gives, notice that H is the variable. We're now ready to solve the problem. First, we find a critical point by setting dvdh to 0. Before that, we find dvdh. Extracting constants we get. So evaluating these derivatives, we obtain times 1 minus 1 over 3 pi 3 h squared, which is pi h squared. So let's set this to 0. This gives, therefore h is equal to the positive square root of this term, which is 50 over 3 times square root of 3 cm. We reject the negative answer since h is always positive. These are the function for v and the first derivative of v. The second derivative of v is equal to substituting the value of h to the second derivative We find that the second derivative is negative. Therefore, by the second derivative test, the height that maximizes the volume is h equals to 50 over 3 square root 3 cm.